Hey everyone and thank you for watching KISS Photo where my job is to make photography easier for you. Now today we're going to cover a fairly broad subject which is color grading in Adobe Lightroom in a fairly short amount of time so please stay tuned. Color plays a huge role in the way that people interpret your photographs. Color grading is just a way that you can alter those specific colors in your photographs to get a desired mood or tone. Now there's a variety of different ways you can go about color grading images. You have the ability to do so in programs like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom or use third-party software like ColorFX Pro and Perfect Photo Suite 9. Now to keep things short and sweet and to the point today, I'm going to go ahead and focus solely on color grading in Adobe Lightroom, specifically because you can bulk edit images and it's just easier for most photographers who are just starting off in Lightroom. Now let's go ahead and jump straight into Adobe Lightroom and look at some of the images that I've taken specifically for this tutorial today. Okay, so before we jump into anything, I want to mention that my photo is probably different than yours. I've shot at 1 16th of a second, f2.8, ISO 400 using an 85 millimeter lens. It shot using diffuse window light against the black background. And I mention that because my results are probably going to vary from yours, but the concepts that I'm going to teach today are still going to be the same. Okay, so because we're color grading, the first thing I'm going to know is we're strictly going to focus on color related, the color related aspects of Lightroom. Okay, primarily we're going to focus on our white balance, our presence, and our tone curves. I'm going to skip for this specific tutorial our, uh, our other sections, our HSL, our hue, saturation, and luminosity, our color, our black and white, and our split toning. We're going to focus primarily on these three uh, parts before we jump forward into more advanced sections. So let's move forward. Okay, let's start off by mentioning what each part of the color channels actually do. First and foremost, our first part, our white balance, is going to obviously go ahead and change our white balance. The temperature is going to change it to either cooler or warmer, depending on what we're trying to do. Our green, uh, sorry, our tint is going to change an image and either add green or magenta tint to it to adjust for different color temperatures in light. Our present section, our clarity, will go ahead and manipulate contrast in our midtones. So if you've ever wondered why it looks like it's adding detail, that's the reason why. It's going to the midtones and adding some contrast in there. Our vibrance is a great tool to use if you're a portrait photographer shooting on location or a wedding photographer shooting on location where you're manipulating most of the saturation aside from skin. Because this image is very, very flat, there's not much color to it aside from the, the skin, it's not necessarily going to change anything aside from the skin itself. So if you're outdoors, that's where you go ahead and manipulate things like trees and plants and bushes and make it look pretty. And I'm going to ma manipulate it here. This is why when we desaturate it, we still have some color. It's adjusting for everything aside from the skin. Our saturation works on every single color of everything. It either oversaturates it or completely desaturates it, depending on your setting. Our RGB channel is the mixture of red, green, and blue colors in your image. Red, green, and blue are obviously the uh, primary colors of light. The opposite of red is going to go ahead and be cyan. Green is magenta. Blue is yellow. I mention that because it's extremely important once we move on to this color grading part. Let's go ahead and just figure out what this image is and what we're trying to do with it. Okay, first and foremost, I want to go for more of a cinematic look. Okay, cinematic looks are completely dis or mostly desaturated tones. Um, we're adding blues to the shadows, we're adding a slight bit of yellows to the highlights, and that would be a more or less a good start with a cinematic photo. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to get there. First things first, we're going to work step by step. I'm going to go to my temperature. I know I want to add some cool tones to my image. Let's drag that up. I would say 18 is fine. Now you'll notice I have some magenta left over. So in order to subtract magenta in my tint, I need to go ahead and just manipulate that and add some green in there. I would say that's perfectly fine. So now we have a more uh, cool image in regards to everything. I'm going to skip again any contrast select its related sections. We're going to jump straight to clarity. Um, I need some more detail. I'm not happy with some of the details that he has in the midtones in his face. I want to add some details to his eyes. In order to do that, I'm going to add clarity. Let's go ahead and adjust clarity for this. So I have more contrast in his eyes and his eyebrows. So it, it's giving the definition that it has 
more detail when it really doesn't, but again, it's just contrasting the details. Vibrance, I'm gonna go ahead and drag down. I'm gonna use it almost like saturation for today. Why? Because it's the first option. That's the only reason why. Okay, that looks fine. So it's a completely desaturated uh, image. It's still on the cooler side of things. And now I wanna add some blues to the shadows and some yellows to the highlights. And again, I'm using our first uh, primary sources of color, our basic channels and our tone curves, just to make things easier today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my channels, select blue. Now you're gonna notice your chart here, your histogram for your specific color, your color channel. Uh, don't get discouraged by this, it's actually extremely easy. The left side is gonna be our shadows, our center is gonna be our midtones, and our right side is gonna be our highlights. So if you're trying to add blues to the shadows, work on the left. If you're trying to add blues to the highlights, sorry, highlights, go to the right, and our midtones are center. So again, drag up. I'm gonna go ahead and be a little more giving with how much blue I'm gonna go ahead and add just so you guys can see the different options we have. Again, that's a lot of blue, but you get the idea. Everything with color grading is small, subtle changes. So that's quite a bit of a, a change. Again, just a subtle curve. And what that did was it added some blues to the, uh, the shadows here, but it also added blues to the midtones and it added blues to the highlights. You can tell that because of the line that's here, our curve is now above that line, so it's adding blue to those tints. So in order to take away blue from the midtones, I need to go ahead and set, select a new point, drag down the point towards the center, and we're doing that, what it's doing is it's adding yellow to the blue to subtract blue. So again, it's just small, subtle changes, but let's go here, okay, and add some yellow again, is it below, below or above the line? Those are things that we need to know. If I add blue to the highlights, it's a tiny bit more blue. Okay, so let's look at before and after. I'm gonna show you a comparison between two images. That looks like nine images I selected. Let's just select two, okay. Before and after. We have more of a cinematic quality photo from our first original image. It's a quick crash course introduction to color grading. Now, let's say, for all intents and purposes, this is the image you want. This is the image that you want, to, or sorry, the preset that you want. You want to save all these settings. You never want to do this again. You, you don't want to remember those numbers. You don't want to write it down. It's as easy as saving it as a preset. I'm going to go ahead and go to presets, go up to the plus sign, save this as ASDF. Why? Because that's what's on my keyboard and that's what we're going with. We'll go ahead and select white channel, sorry, white balance. Tone curve, clarity, sharpening, treatment, color, split tone, and process version. We're not selecting basic tones specifically because we don't want to change the tone curves per image. Specifically, if you have uh, images that have different exposures, it's also manipulating the exposures in those images and it's just gonna look completely off. So let's just focus on the color aspect of things. I'm gonna go ahead and press create. Okay, so now our ASDF is already saved. So if I selected another, another image, I don't want to go ahead and ever worry about that processing anymore. All I need to go down is click ASDF and it saved that. So if you ever heard a preset, if you ever downloaded a preset, it's the same thing. What you're downloading is other people's recipes for their images and how they color grade things. So it's a great way if you guys aren't comfortable with color grading for the, the primary aspect of, let's say, taste, and you're not sure what you want, but you like somebody else's work, see if they have any presets available. If there's something that they're doing that you want to learn how to do, this is a great way for you to start understanding their recipes. You can tell what their temperatures, what their tints are, what their clarity, what their vibrance, what their saturation is, how they manipulate their tone curves. Do they add hue, saturation, and luminosity to the image? Do they work with split toning? You can tell that from a preset. It's a great way for you to learn. Now, Presets are not going to work with every image, specifically because it's a variety of different factors. If, for example, you wanted to use this preset for a very high key image. So what I did was add colors to the shadows. So if it's a very high key image, there's not much shadows to start off with. So it's not gonna look okay. So don't feel that every preset's gonna work for every photo. That's just the way that presets work. Now it's a great introduction and a great crash course to color grading, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that's a good introduction for you in regards to basic color grading. We didn't get too advanced. I wanted you guys to learn what the RGB channel does, how to manipulate things to my taste. 
Uh, what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn next week? And that's what I want to know. What can I simplify for you? What can I make easier for you? Feel free to comment below or feel free to go ahead and either A, Facebook me, B, go ahead and find me on Twitter, C, email me, find a way to contact me. I want to know what you want to learn. Let's make your life easier. And I hope that you enjoyed the video today. Please share with your friends. Thank you for watching.